we'd like to be able to name things, we'd like to be able to draw things. Um, yes, that would be good. This is the core of inorganic, is to understand this. But we have to know about all the other things as well to get here. So it's, it is building in some ways to this. Um, so for the exam, all you have to be able to do is names, structures, isomers. So just 9 to 9.3. Of the coordination compass. It wouldn't have been nice if that was the only thing on the exam. No. For oh. this. And then on Monday, um, we're going to cover alloys and defects um, of solids because we skipped over that um, uh, when I was sick. And so that was the last thing that was on the um, review sheet. Um, so, yeah, looking for those things. I did post the element questions and the rest of the element presentations and even my hydrogen presentations um, on Blackboard. So you can check those. And eventually this weekend I'll get around to writing the key to the practice exam. Um, so homework is due tonight at five and your rough draft paper is due for writing to say. So we're just going to practice today. Nomenclature, coordination, kind of, um, maybe you don't remember back to some gen chem. Maybe you won't. But I'm not assuming you should remember it. Um, so, but it might be easier. We had the little <laughs> technology break the other day, right? So we talked about Werner complexes and coordination, um, chemistry, and how he came across different complexes where they couldn't explain the bond. So we have that little introduction. And um, so when we're trying to think about how do they go about solving this problem, because nitrogen should not, it shouldn't form more bonds. According to Balin's bond theory, it should have three hydrogens, a lone pair, and be happy not interact with metals. The chlorine, being charged, should interact with metals, but the nitrogen should not. So, uh, we had to kind of scratch their head and think about how this might work, because the conductivity said that there were multiple ions, so it wasn't making one big complex, it wasn't um, kind of a bond between the cobalt and the chlorine. We had three negative ions there. Conductivity will be associated with four ions. Um, and so that's what this four is. The conductivity makes sense. And actually, they battled it out. It wasn't a clear-cut case of, this is what it is. We're going to go forward with that. Um, the competing viewpoint was put out by Jorgensen. And he thought the nitrogens were actually making a long-range chain and that they were five coordinate. The, um, he still got that there would be four um, ions because he thought the chlorines that were going to be associated with the nitrogens were still going to come off in solution. So that really the CLs would come off. The big difference is how were the nitrogens connected? And he wanted to make the cobalt only have three bonds because that kind of matched the rest of the periodic table. So um, where's cobalt? Mm -hmm. What's the charge on that cobalt? We put that the other day. Three, three. plus, right, because it has three chlorines to make it equal. One, two, three. So we would have one, two, three, four, five, six D electrons because we take away from the S so we can count over. And so with 60 electrons, that should form um, an interaction with these lone pairs and then three bonds and it's happy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, these coordination complexes kind of you know, did jump start um, a new way. are things that um, donate electron density. So um, if we're looking at ligands, we can 
have neutral things, we have low pair stone meeting, right? All of our phosphorus ligands. Phosphorus lone pairs of donations. We can have oxygens that um, that donate their lone pairs. So all these neutral ligands into the charge. We have charged ligands like the chlorine. It doesn't have to just be an outer sphere ion. Minus two minus all of those could be charged or neutral. We talked about the interstellar and outer sphere, but this is a little more than the way. What does inner sphere mean? sphere ligands because they're not directly bonded. Um, if we have both outer sphere and inner sphere written up there, then we're talking about a compound. If we just are talking about the metal and its inner sphere ligands, we are talking about a complex. Because okay? compounds are neutral. And so they have the charge balance. Complexes do not have to be neutral. In fact, most of the time they do have a charge. These are from your book, and then these slides are posted, so you don't have to worry about scribbling down these really fast. Okay? We're going to read through them, and then we're going to see some examples on the next slide. But then this is the concise summary of how you deal with nomenclature um, with the coordination complex. Cation comes first, then the anion. The inner sphere and the metal go in brackets with the metal first. And the ligands are organized by um, name, alphabetically. We use the prefixes di, tri, tetra, etc., penta, hexa, um, to indicate how many ligands you have. So with the last one, we had a hexamine. There are six amines on there. Um, if there already is a di in the name, ethylene diamine, for example, um, then you don't want to use di twice. It gets kind of confusing. So you start using bis, tris, tetrakis, pentakis um, as the descriptors. Um, yeah, ligands are in alphabetical order. Anionic ligands have an O on them. Chlorido, aqua, no, aqua, right? That's a common misconception. Um, this is the NH2 with a negative charge is an amino. This is an amine. <laughs> whether it has hydrogens, and then it has two M's in the amine because we are talking about a ligand rather than a molecule. And we're going to use the stock method most of the time for our nomenclature, and the book offers two methods. Um, but the Roman numeral of the oxidation state goes with 
um, the metal name. And if the charge is negative, you're going to add eight suffix. So cobalt eight, if it was a negatively charged complex. Last one is more about our isomers. We're going to use cis, trans, mer, and phos, meridial and uh, facial for our isomers. We'll see what those are. So when we're looking at writing the formula, because you have to go either direction, square brackets for the complex metal then our ligand with the abbreviations, those common abbreviations that you did on, those, on the quiz, the number of those that you have, common abbreviation of your next ligand, and then how many of those you have, and then overall the charge of this complex. If you're asked to write the compound, then you would have the counter ions out here, outside the bracket. For names, we have a platinum two complex here. So platinum goes at the end, the metal goes at the end of the name, even though it goes at the beginning of the formula. And this is the oxidation state. And then we have two Cl minus ligands. Then we have diphenylphosphine. Then thiourea, which was not one of the ligands you had to know the structure on, so you have to look that one up. Um, notice there's no capitalizations, there's no spaces, there's no dashes. Even this first capitalization is only there if it is the start of a sentence. You do not have to have it if it is kind of in the middle of the sentence. You could, instead of di, need to use the bis, tris, tetricus. So um, this di, if the, this had a di in it, would become bis. The last piece is mu. And mu defines a ligand that splits between two metal centers. So you could have ligands that are attached to multiple metals. There's a, it's in italics and then a dash. <laughs> We're going to practice in a minute. Um, <coughs> I said if it was a negatively charged complex, right? Because we could end up with a whole bunch of negative ligands on a positive metal center and end up with the overall negative charge on a complex. And so if we get into that situation, then we have to add the eight on the end, but it uses um, the traditional or historic names, the ones that go along with the periodic table. So instead of iron eight, it's ferrite. Instead of copper eight, it's cuprate. Um, lead is plumbate, arginate, arate, stanate. So those are all. Names. What about if they're cation? On these, if we're writing out the names and we still have these common um, iron, right? you're going to use the fair ick, fair us, um, those descriptors. So it's still, when you're saying the name, it's going to come from the historic name or the periodic table name. 
Okay, so the only way to do this is to practice. So, I want you to do A and C with the person next to you. Do we have to put the charge in there anyway? Like the three thingy in there anyway? Like the copper three or doesn't matter? No, the copper two? Oh, I so saw three earlier. I was going to say, what three are you talking about? <laughs> I so saw three. Well, it doesn't end in cuprate. So that means it's not a negative charge. Okay. Okay. Let's see. It's a nitrate. Yep, and an aqua. Two aquas. Die aqua. Fancy. So that you have to both go one direction and the other direction. What is the aqua? Where's the aqua? I don't know. That was one of the rules that I didn't catch. I do I What? Oh, yeah. Those are eyes. Gotcha. I just saw lines. <laughs> Formulae. That's because that's the multiple. Really? Yeah. I didn't know that. I was really entertained by that. Can you tell? Formulae. I didn't know that. Okay. Is it okay there, sweetie? You okay there, sweetie? You seemed a little out of it today. <laughs> so, I was just too busy last night writing my paper. And it's, yeah, so. Uh, I function on eight hours of sleep, not the, yep. not under. I feel you. Okay, so okay, do so we put the let's name it a platinum. Platinum. Yeah. Man, that's a nasty looking formula. Um, nitro? Dinitro. Dinitrite. Isn't it nitrite? Who has A and C done? The nitro will come first. Is it not alphabetical? Oh, uh, that was in the chart. No, that's not the formula, never mind. What? <laughs> in the other one, it's based off of like the other thing. Tram. Di aqua aqua di aqua di iodo. Okay, so let's um, write them out. So we've got copper, and then what does it mean? NH3. NH3. How many of those do we have? Four. Four. This is the complex. And what is the overall charge of the complex? Plus two. Plus two. Plus two because the amines are neutral. Is that right? Oh, we Okay. That's what I thought in the first two. But that was too easy. <laughs> What's the charge for platinum? I think it's going to be two because both of the onos are negative. I thought you did. Oh, and I know it was two, so it's a four. Four? Can you have a four? Okay, yeah. so C. Is it a name? I think it's a formula. Both. Both. Okay. okay. So we'll write first the formula. Um, there. Platinum, so the metal goes first. Then, how do you decide 
Funsies. Alphabetical for the name, charge, or the formula, although that is not consistently applied. Oh. They actually have, there's a red book, an IUPAC red book coordination complexes, and they actually rewrote it two years ago. So, there is historical names, there's kind of recent names, and then there's current IUPAC rules. Yeah, that nobody pays attention to. <laughs> so, what's our ionic ligands? NO2? <laughs> okay, how many of those do we have? We have two. two. I2. Two. Two. Could we switch those around? Sure. And then water two. O2. Overall, what is the charge on this? Four? It's neutral. It is neutral, but... The whole complex is neutral, so within the brackets. So when we go to write the name... It's four. Some of you were answering four. It is platinum four because we have four negative things, but the complex is neutral. Um, so the complex is compound the same thing? Um, now ligands. Okay, so we have... Nitrito, Jodo, oh, I think that's a So, Di, Iodo, which sometimes they get rid of one of the I's. Diodo. Because <laughs> otherwise it seems kind of funny. But I like Di Iodo. <laughs> Dinitro. Dinitrito. Dinitrito. It's aqua. No space, really. I just don't ever write them in the right order. I always throw them at all and then write them. Nitrito. Um, so we asked about isomers. We get to isomers, but this is a trans isomer. And that would be italics out front of the middle. So we're going to type all of On an exam, I don't expect you to show italics. I do. Okay. So now I want you to work with the person behind you to do B and D. And if you don't have a person, no, so these two rows, but there's an uneven number, so you guys will have to spread out. So you guys have to go this way. B and D.
so it's not like it's a horrible paper. It's just I don't see the right. This is we'll have uh, so uh, bichloro, bichloro, and abyss by purity. Right. So we start with by purity. So it's gonna be Oh, I guess we'll have to this two two by four. No. There's no charge. The the weird nitrogen bonds are by period. By period. By Is there a charge on those? Nope. Okay. Just nitrogen long pairs. No, we would say the bike. Yeah. I don't know. So this just must be a short end of the fifty then we're not Oh, 
Iron. Iron. I don't know. Wait, well, you know, there's ten. I can't count. Let's see. Oh, okay. It's lead. There's ten. There's lead. <laughs> okay, so we did. I don't it's know. It's lead. Um, C. Let's see. So, Pepper. 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 Try 
it's a, I, it's a well, I remember it being one less than what it should. <laughs> anyway, it's not internally consistent. That's all I'm saying in that name. So I will correct it and put it internally consistent and put it okay. How about this one? You get to have a mu in there, right? Because you have the oxo that is split between two things. So mu oxo. And then, this is hard, right? The oxo is between two different metal centers. Are they the same? So, there, there. Oh, yeah, I was not that. And then sometimes. Okay, sometimes these are regular brackets because we have to put another set of whole brackets. Oh my goodness. And if we're writing the formula and wanted to do four plus. So if we Complex than the other side of the complex. Would it be brackets both times? Yes. Hexanitrito. 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 Cobaltate? Cobaltate? Cobaltate. 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 I think there's a team as well. Cobaltate. Cobaltate. Three. Three. Okay, so ethylene diamine is the EN. So it has a dye in it. So that means when we go to put the three, it's not tri, it's tris. So tris, diethylene, diamine, cobalt, and what's the overall charge? Three. 
Is it nitro or nitrito? Nitrito? Nitro? Nitrito. No, nitrito is through the oxygen. Oh. Nitro is through the nitrogen. Oh, oh dang so it. Is it a common name and not the IU tackle? Okay, so these common normal. Nitro. <laughs> okay. okay. So many of those things. Oh my god. <laughs> I don't raise those ones more than those ones. Yeah. This is the IU pack is slightly more important. Mm -hmm. changing how they're bonded. So uh, that would be thiocyanate or isothiocyanate. Changing how they're bonding, we're going to see a couple of those. You could have different ionization or different oxidation numbers on your metal. Those are actually different constitutional isomers. And sometimes if you have multiple atoms in a ligand that could bond, you can have coordination isomerization, or coordination isomers, where they're bonding through different things. But to get a constitutional isomer, you actually have to change how they're connected. Stereoisomers, they're all connected in the same way, so the bonds are the same, um, but they are arranged differently in space. Geometric, conformational, or optical isomers. So your book has a like, nice little flow chart, but it ends up to be the same. Are the bonds between atoms the same? Yes? Then it's stereo or configurational isomers. If it is no, then it's constitutional isomers. Okay. And within those, you can have different classes, right? If it's a mirror image, then they are optical isomers or enantiomers, or they could be geometric isomers. Just like cis and trans is not a stereo isomer in organic, cis and trans does not have to be a stereo isomer in coordination complexes. So let's look at some examples. The difference between nitro and nitrito, we did naming examples, is whether it's bonded through the oxygen or bonded through the nitrogen. So those two are linkage isomers or constitutional isomers because you're actually changing how it's bonded. Um, and they're actually different colors as well. Like I said, 
isothiocyanate or thiocyanate. Now, thiol is sulfur, so by saying thiocyanate, that means you're connecting to that first thing. You're connecting to the sulfur. Iso means connect from the opposite side. So you're not connecting at the sulfur. Um, so we can have, um, when we write it out, we want to write it with our connecting atom first. So when we did the nitrito, which I think we erased, I did O and O, but when we do the nitro, it's NO2 to show that their connection point is either the oxygen or the nitrogen. Geometric isomers. If you have a square planar complex, you can have cis and trans, right? Cis is that they're on the same side, trans is that they're on opposite sides. We we looked at this when we were looking at um, stretches and, and telling the difference between them. But we also can have them for octahedral complexes. That first exam, right? We can have them on the same side. Could I have a cis that has an NH3 here and an NH3 there? Yes, because all I'd have to do is rotate it and they'd be on the same side. They would just have to be two that were in a equatorial or the uh, middle positions rather than the axial. Whereas trans would be opposite each other. So either <coughs> axial or the NH3 here and the other NH3 over there. Okay. 180 degrees apart. So trans, 180 degrees apart. Cis, closer than that. If we have three of the same ligand, then when we're, so this is mostly going to be important only when we have octahedral complexes. Because if we have three of the same ligand in a square planar, there's no ambiguity. It's going to be the same thing, we just rotate it. But when we have an octahedral complex, it is going to make a difference. So if all of the NH3s were along the equatorial positions, or the equator, that also is called a meridian. So their meridional, or mer, is the descriptor. If they are all on one face, which is easier to see here, then they're facial or boss. So how are they on the same face? Um, if we took one corner of the octahedron, they're all on the same side. Here, they're all along the belt. Now they could be all along the belt going here, here, and here as well. So it doesn't matter whether we rotate it. Um, but are they on the same face of the octahedron or are they not? All these chloramine ligands wouldn't have to be the same. We could still use, as long as there was three ligands that were the same, we could use these descriptions to help us figure out um, which isomer we have. So we've got a couple of examples here. So cisplatin, which happens to be it's a cancer drug, trans doesn't do anything. Um, then cis and trans, so that's kind of the same. Um, it doesn't have to be octahedral or square planar, although that's when you see them the most. So we've got a stair number of um, five. So trigonal and bipyramidal in shape. The ligands next to each other is cis. The ligands next to each other is cis. Ligands opposite each other is trans. Make sense?
one of the ways to think about cis and trans is can you draw a line between the ligands without going through the metal? If you can draw a line between the ligands, then it's cis. If you go through the metal, then it was trans. Right? So I can connect these two ligands without going through the metal, so it's cis. I can connect these two ligands without going through the metal, another cis. Here, I have to go through the metal, so it's trans. the difference in stretching frequencies on this exam. But remember, we can look and see, based on the character tables, whether they're IR active or inactive, and that can distinguish whether it is a cis square planar or a trans square planar, because we have different point groups, C2B or um, D2H. Are they mirror images of each other? Okay. So we're used to seeing that in tetrahedral because it's carbon and mirror images of each other. In the octahedral, um, we can have the mirror images as well. So that does require that we have different ligands or that we have connections between ligands that make them different in space. And so the non-superimposable mirror images are enantiomers. So one example where they're not all different ligands, but we have non-superimposable mirror images, is that cobalt one that we were naming, where we have ethylene dimine, could also be 2,2 by pyridine with this picture. Right? All we know is that there's nitrogen donors and they're connected together somehow. And because they're connected with um, the bottom one to the front one, and the top one to the back one, and then the two sides, that has specific, specific, specific isomerization because it's the mirror image of if we took the nitrogen that was down and hooked it to the back one. And subsequently, so they're non superimposable room just so they're in Good thing we're going to talk about next, right? So after our exam, we're going to talk about how all these uh, complexes are colorful, how we can predict what color they are, how we can predict what kind of visible or UV spectra they're going to have based on the ligand and the metal, how many D electrons they have. Okay. And so we can have all kinds of lovely things. But this gives you also one more chance to practice some naming. Those are, um, <laughs> yeah. Cool. Those are Questions? Have a good Friday. Have a good weekend.